today we are discussing loops and we do not directly start with for loop or while loop. First of all, we just try to understand the basics. Okay, for that purpose, we will be using our decision box where there will be a condition. If that condition is true, then we will enter inside the loop, there will be some statements here. So, we will be entering inside the loop and the last statement inside the loop will be the statement which will be updating my condition and after that what I will do, I will again go up and check my condition. So, if that condition is true, I will again go inside the loop and I will be executing these statements. Okay. Again, you know the last statement is the updation statement. I again go up. Okay. When that condition becomes false, then what happens? I come out of the loop. Okay. So, in this way, we will try to draw our loops. Let us start. Draw a flow chart to print first 10 positive integers. So, we start. So, what are the first 10 positive integers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 up to 10. So, do we, do we require any input? Do we require any data from the user? No, we already know that we have to print from 1 to 10. So, we do not require any input. We can directly say since our first number is 1. So, we say num is equal to 1 because first of all we have to print 1 and we have to print up to 10. So, is num is smaller than equal to 10. So, if this is yes, then what will I do? I will print. So, what will I be printing? I will print value of num. Okay. and then I update num. So, my next num is equal to num plus 1. Next value of num is 1 more than the present value. Okay. And after this, I go up to form a loop. I am going up to here. So, I go up to form a loop. Okay, is a num is smaller than equal to 10? Yes. If it is no, it means work is done. So, what will I do? I will write stop. Okay, now, let us see how it works. First time num is 1, 1 is smaller than equal to 10, 1 is smaller than 10. So, what we are doing? We are printing 1 after that num becomes 2. Again 2 is smaller than equal to 10, then what do I do? I print 2. Okay. So, then I will be printing 3 okay, because 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 up to 9 everything is smaller than 10 and then at some point I will be printing 10 because 10 is also equal to 10. So, I will be printing it. After that what happens? The value of num becomes 11. Okay. So, when value of num becomes equal to 11, so is num is smaller than equal to 10? No. So, what do I do? I stop. Okay. It means in this flow chart, I will be printing from 1 to 10 and whenever num is becoming 11, at that time what will happen? I will not go down, I will be going here, it means I will be stopping. Okay. So, this is the controlling condition. So, this decision box is the controlling condition. Okay, it decides whether we have to go inside loop or we have to go out of the loop and then there are these two statements which will get repeated in this loop. Okay. So, in this way we have formed a loop. Okay. See, we should not connect up to here. Okay. By mistake, if you connect it up to here, then what will happen? Okay, suppose, instead of connecting it here, you are connecting it here, then what will happen? See, every time you are increasing num and then again num is becoming equal to 1. So, num will always be 1. So, this becomes an infinite loop. Okay. That is why you have to be very careful while 
drawing loops and you have to connect this up to up to here okay up to the decision box only okay now this is our second problem draw flow chart to print first n positive integers so we start now this is more generalized problem because the user will supply us uh, the value of n if user inputs n is equal to 10 then we will be printing first 10 uh, positive integers now if user inputs 100 then we will be printing first 100 positive integers okay so it means we need to input the value of n okay user will supply us value of n then in this case also our first number is equal to 1 so i am initializing num equal to 1 again i will have the same decision box h num is smaller than equal to n yes what do i do i print the value of num and after that what do i do i update num no no means work is done then what do i do i stop i go up up to here okay so what is the difference between pre previous problem and this problem previous problem see i was printing up to 10 now i am printing up to n value of n is being supplied by the user okay it means n times i'll be printing the value of num through this particular loop see this is the controlling condition and then there are two more statements inside this loop okay so if this is yes then i'll go inside the loop and if this is no then this loop will get terminated i'll go i'll go out of the loop okay so suppose i have to print first 100 numbers so how many times this loop will get executed see i am going down 100 times to print the value of number okay and then after that what is happening num is becoming 101 so when num is equal to 101 then i go out of the loop so it means this loop will get executed 100 times if value of n is equal to 100 so loop will get executed 100 times to print 100 numbers okay fine now let us come back to bogilal bogilal sells mangoes draw a flow chart to generate bill for n customers okay now there are multiple customers so bogilal will tell us how many customers are there he will supply us value of n based on that we have to generate bill okay so let us start so how many customer that user is going to tell tell us so input and number of customers suppose bogilal wants to generate bill for 10 customers then he'll be inputting 10 okay so input n and then i'll be having a counter suppose i am taking c for the count c is equal to 1 c equal to 1 means i am generating bill for first customer okay see this is the controlling statement age c is smaller than equal to n because i have to generate bill for n customers is c smaller than equal to n yes okay now i'll start for the first customer it means i for the first customer i'll ask number of mangoes and a rate so now what will i do i'll write input number of mangoes comma rate rate per mango for first customer 
and now I am generating build build is equal to number of mangoes into rate and after that I am printing bill for first com customer. So, print value of bill. See after that I am not stopping what I am doing now I am incrementing my counter c equal to c plus 1. So, first time c was 1, so second time c will become 2 and then I am going up. Okay. H c is more than equal to n, suppose I want to generate bill for 5 customers, so n is equal to 5. So, is c is more than equal to n, next time c equal to 2, yes, so I will again go, I will input number of mangoes and rate for the second customer, I will generate bill for the second customer, I will print bill for the second customer, then I c becomes c plus 1. So, c will become 3, is 3 smaller than equal to n, suppose n is equal to 5, yes. So, now I will I'll input number of mangoes and rate for the third customer, I will generate his bill, I will print his bill, then c becomes equal to 4. So, I do for fourth customer, then I do for fifth customer and after that c becomes equal to 6. Whenever c is equal to greater than n, then what is happening? We are coming out of this loop. So, no, we are coming out of this loop and we stop. Okay. So, we have a flexibility also for every customer we are having a different rate because you know that some of the customers they bargain also. So, every customer number of mangoes and rate is different. I am using the same variable bill okay, to print bill for all n customers okay, because one at a time because first time it is it is storing bill for the first customer, second time it will have bill for second customer. Same way I am using the common variables nm and rate for all customers. Okay. First time NM is number of mangoes for first customer, rate is the rate, rate for uh, say first customer, second time in same variable I will be storing for second customer. Okay. So, in this way this is working. Our next problem is draw a flow chart to print odd numbers up to n. Okay. So, value of n will be supplied by the user, suppose n is equal to 20, suppose user inputs 20. Then your odd numbers will be 1, 3, 5 up to 19. Okay. If we call these numbers odd, so what is the first value of odd? 1. So, my flow chart will be like this start start. I have to input value of n, input n. After that, odd is equal to 1 because my first odd number is 1. Is odd is smaller than equal to n because I have to print odd numbers up to n only. Yes, what am I doing? I am printing value of odd. So, print odd and after that increment odd number. So, what will be your next odd number? If first odd number is 1, next will be 3, next will be 5. So, odd will get incremented by 2, odd plus 2. First time odd is equal to 1, so odd plus 2 means next time it will become 3. Okay. If it is 3, so next time it will become 3 plus 2, 5. Okay. And then I go up, up to this point. Okay. Odd is more than equal to n, we are going down, otherwise what we are doing, our work is done, we stop. Okay. So, let us take this example, suppose n is equal to 20. So, first time odd is equal to 1. Okay. So, is 1 is more than equal to 20? Yes. So, we will be printing 1. 
after that odd is equal to odd plus 2 so odd will become 3 again is 3 is smaller than equal to 20 yes so we'll be printing 3 and then odd is equal to 5 will print 5 then will print 7 and so on at one point we will be printing 19 okay, because 19 is also smaller than equal to 20. After that odd will become 21. Okay. So, after printing 19 odd will become 21 is 21 is smaller than equal to 20 no. So, what will we do? We will stop. Okay. So, whenever this condition is true we are going down. Okay. So, we are looping otherwise what we are doing we are going out of the loop. Okay. Okay, we terminate our loop fine. 